Hey everyone, this is my Patreon proud reaction to the 21st episode of World Trigger. Now, last episode, you had Yuma and Midori Kawa go at it, and Yuma won, you know, <laughs> pretty handily. Uh, no real, no, no real debate about that. And we also had Yuma head on over to the office to talk to everyone about the incoming neighbor large-scale invasion. And Yuma's kind of, well, I guess mostly Replica, is going to kind of give some information about the neighbor world to them. But of course, you know, uh, only if they agree not to, you know, screw over Yuma, you know, which he agreed to, you know, it was a verbal agreement, but Yuma can, of course, tell someone's lying, so in this case, that's kind of good enough. So yeah, this episode, we should be starting out pretty much with that sort of exposition, so I mean, I know that doesn't sound super exciting, but I, I do like the the idea of the neighbor world, and I do want to know more about it, so I'm definitely interested in learning more about that, so yeah, let's get into it and see how that goes. Three, two, one, play. But I'm sure it's something we can deal with. It's just a matter of the casualties, really. Huh. <laughs> yeah, it does sound like a universe and planets. Huh. They move. It's a good name for them. It's pretty cool, though. I guess it makes sense. So basically, whichever one, whichever one's like near us can evade us, basically. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I was wondering how they can narrow it down, but that's a pretty good way to narrow it down. We're getting there. Just shut up. Listen. Replica sensor. He really is a cool, uh, cool boss. Yeah, it's quite a bit better. The neighbor's world. Neighbor no sekai. <laughs> what she said. Well, I assume, but it's hard to tell which one. Although you could probably figure it out if you could remember exactly what day it happened and could like trace that back. Ooh, Marine Nation, that looks really cool. Leo Forio. Oh. That one looks like it would be difficult to invade. Like Russia. Well, I guess just had to hope that that's not the one attacking us. It's not very helpful. That would be really bad. Okay, that definitely sounds like a problem. That definitely adds some chaos to it. So we're not going to narrow it down to exactly who it is, but we can make a real good guess, basically. Q. 
Keon, was that the icy one? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I guess it's not that specific. Oh, okay. Well, it's still more helpful than nothing, but... <laughs> That would be the next big thing, yeah. I'm sure they do. Especially the one that's war-focused, I'm sure they would have some decent amount of black triggers. Six. Oh, damn. That's... that's a problem. I don't think they would send all of them, but still. Even if they only send half, man. Yeah. They're not going to send all of them. But still, that's a problem. Huh. Makes sense. Yeah. There'll be some black trigger users, though. I do look forward to seeing actual human neighbors that are antagonists. <laughs> yes, could you please fill in the dots for us? Let's do that. Now back to the training. Uh, Natsume. I'm gonna try to remember that, because she's clearly gonna be uh, Chika's friend. <laughs> Just do your best. <laughs> uh Don't don't hurt me. Yeah, just don't be lazy. You know. <laughs> uh Well then work hard. Let's do that. Well, I'm sure she'll be an air rank eventually. But I'm sure there's plenty of people that are content with just reaching B rank. Because that's when you're an official agent. You're welcome. <laughs> the plump old man. Well, I'm sure, because that's information for people that actually live there. <sighs> well, thank you, I guess. It would be interesting to see more about that relationship. I imagine Kido was a little bit less of a jerk before. Yeah, hopefully they can fix that hole before the neighbor invasion. <laughs> uh... You told me you were upset, so I come to cheer you up. Because, you know, I'm your favorite person after all. I don't know how well that would go. <laughs> uh.
Oh? Why him? I mean, I guess it'd be him trying to protect someone. So I can imagine Mikamo, you know, going up against somebody that he has no chance against to protect someone. Oh. So we haven't decided that yet. Huh, really? Oh. Is Mima one of them? Most of those names don't mean anything to me, but... Yeah, clearly he'd be one. I'll put in a good word for you. <laughs> yeah, he knows how to speak to him. <laughs> Man, they look so cool. I'm sure he can still help. And it wouldn't kill you to do him this favor. He's not asking a whole lot. Because my side effect tells me so. Wow, like word for word. Of course, the Tamakoma branch building looks pretty cool, too. It may not look as, you know, high-tech and expensive as the... Headquarters, but it's a little cool. Yeah, but he wants to do it the right way. There'd be too many problems otherwise. Yeah, there'll be there'll be issues. But when they actually have to see him doing things like killing a fake Treon soldier in zero point four seconds, you know, people can complain less. It shouldn't take that long. It may take a bit longer for them to become A rank as a squad, but being a B rank shouldn't take that long. Yeah, that's true. I'm sure when things get really dangerous, that thing will... It'll be used. I'm sure they won't complain too much. Depending on the circumstances. I feel like you did. Yeah, I mean, if it's between the choice of getting in a bit of trouble or letting someone die, you know, because you didn't use it. An easy choice. Huh, it's even later than usual. It almost, it almost feels like they begrudgingly put the opening in the show. I almost wish somebody would just, like, edit the files and put the opening just in the beginning. It just throws me off so much. Because when I hear an opening, I think, oh, well, yeah, now I have at least, like, 20 more minutes of show to watch. But when I hear the opening in this show, it's like, cool, I have, like, seven more minutes of show to watch. So, you know, you know what I mean? It's just such a weird decision.
Changes the new world. Next cooking. <laughs> nice apron. Oh wow, that was a lot of food. It took me second to notice that. Like two feet tall, how much do you need? Oh, is it broke? <laughs> uh uh that's i'm sure that was very rude i mean that happened a while ago <laughs> cool <laughs> uh. I wonder if I'll have a scene like this when it gets A rank. Okay, everybody settle down. Must be nice to be a border agent. <laughs> Uh, of course, Yuma's a, is part of Border as well, but still it's a trainee, so I guess you wouldn't get that kind of attention. <laughs> it does feel like it, hasn't it? <laughs> so busy with Border stuff. That was pretty surprising. <laughs> Just pull that thing down. <laughs> uh, true enough. It's definitely true that he would still be C rank if Yuma didn't show up in his life. And Yuma probably wouldn't be a bo involved with Border at all if it wasn't for y Yukimo. Way to bring down the mood, Mikamo. Oh, Chica. Oh, she goes to the, to the same school. That's... I mean, I guess not that big of a coincidence, because... The school's fairly close to border. Any friend of Chica's is a friend of ours? <laughs> Diving into difficulty? Oh. Oh, he's doing it for her. Okay. I got you now. <laughs> uh, why are you asking? Are you. Do you have an interest in her? In other words, he likes her, but doesn't have the guts to confess, basically. <laughs> well, that's a reasonable assumption. <laughs> I mean, at that age, you pretty much always ask that question if any guy and girl are interacting with each other. Yeah, and that's... Now that I think about it, that's probably what gets you in trouble. The, the trouble that Gene mentioned earlier. That's probably what it is. I mean, you'll, I'm sure you'll be fighting during the invasion. <laughs> yes, we all three will be airing together and going away missions. Everybody always assumes Yemo is the, the leader.
Yes, don't don't let out of your sight. <laughs> uh yes, I'm sure he's already jealous. There's no time to be kissing. They're watching. He's just thinking about you. Okay, so we have a time frame. So in, within 10 days, we should be suffering an attack. Everybody better... So basically, we're not going to go on any more away missions anytime soon. We need to have everyone here. Could you imagine how screwed they would be if they were still away on, on if the best squads were already on a away mission when the invasion happened? They would be screwed. Like they'd probably lose the border. Like the entire building would be destroyed, all the agents killed. It'd be pretty bad. So luckily, that's not an impact. That's not what we have to deal with. But. Is this is this the invasion already? Because this does sound pretty bad. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's what it's Supposed to be kind of referencing. <laughs> Impressive, right? Which is a good name. Or they could be dead. I really don't think Chica's gonna ever see her brother and friend again personally. Yeah, but first we kind of have to deal with the, the invasion. Okay. Trigger on, and it's going to stay on for a while. Okay, that was the 21st episode of World Trigger. And as I thought, the episode started off with Replica just explaining about the neighbor world and how it works. Basically what it is, is it's outer space with individual planet nations that all, you know, orbits around. And sometimes they're within range to go somewhere, like to our world, for instance. And when they're in lineup well, then you can send your gates and go there and get some, you know, get some pe people, get some trium. Now, if they could actually accurately uh, measure that, you know... Like they could tell when a when a neighbor a neighbor of planet nations nearby, they could actually predict, you know, when possible invasions, well like you know, the, the mini ones, would happen. So, you know, it'd be cool if they could do that. But anyway, yeah, this information allowed us to kind of narrow down who would be attacking us because only people within that, you know, that's that's close by could actually do that. And the ones were Af Africa. Africa, blah, 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 the war nation, and uh, one other one, which I don't remember which one that was. I want to say it was the, the snowy one, but I'm not positive. But I know the other one was the war, the war nation, 
which just hopefully it's not that one because we are i mean it probably is because they gave us the most detail about that one so i guess it's gonna be that one because they they bothered to mention that we have like 13 black triggers and yeah, I think it's going to be that one, so hopefully they don't send a lot of the black triggers. Because they said they kept most of them home for protection, but I would imagine they'd bring at least three as a bare minimum. Possibly up to six. I don't think it would be any more than six. I think six would be the absolute maximum they would ever send. But uh, I think three would probably be at least what they would send if they're trying to plan on getting any real results from this. But uh, the real problem is if there was like a joint attack, which I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Uh, but th it's still a problem, nonetheless. But yeah, not a lot really happened in the episode as far as events go. We had that talk where Replica was explaining the world. We had a little bit of, uh, you know, interaction between Chica and her new friend Natsume, who seems, you know, like a friendly girl. So they're becoming pretty good friends pretty quickly, and apparently she goes to the same school as Chica, because of course she does. And then they all just kind of ate, ate lunch together on the roof, which was a fun little scene. Some nice uh, slice of life shenanigans there. With Natsume once again asking that question, Hey, Mikamo, are you going out with Chica? Of course not. Don't be silly, Baka. And then she's like, oh, well, in that case, I'll just make you jealous by snuggling together with Chica, just me and her, which I'm sure that worked quite well. Uh, but yeah, we had a lot of little bit of flashback bits here and there, like with Mik like, like with Yuma thinking about various things Mikamo has uh, talked to him about before, which probably will be relevant in this attack going forward. Because this, yeah, Mikamo's mentality, it could definitely have an effect on some of the actions he takes there. So it makes sense why Yuma would be thinking about that. Also, we had some stuff with Jean and Miwa. Now, Jean, because of a side effect, he knows that Mikamo is going to be in some trouble. And he doesn't want Mikamo to die because he knows Mikamo and Yuma are kind of important. So, uh, you know, does also they're part of the Tomokoma branch. So he doesn't want them to die for several reasons, I'm sure. So kind of enlisted Miwa. Hey, Miwa, can you want me to do me a favor? No, I hate you. Why would I ever do you a favor? Well, uh, you know, Fujin, that black trigger that you want, well, I could, uh, I could recommend it to you. Nobody has gotten it yet. They don't know who they're going to give it to you. So maybe I could, uh, maybe I could help you out with that, you know, maybe. Then, you know, and even then Miwa was still like, yeah, just, I don't think so. Like still not really being on board, but I think, I think he's going to do it in the end. I think Gene got to him there, but you know, Miwa is not going to be obvious about that in the moment, but Gene seemed confident that he would do it. And so am I for the most part. So that'll be something. Uh, what else did we get with the episode? That's about it. I mean, we also had a scene where uh, this uh, Rindo, I think his name is, yeah, Rindo was talking to Yuma and kind of a flashback scene about trying to get him to skip ahead, you know, not having to go through the usual border process of ranking up. But you, but Yuma said, nah, no, I'm okay. Like, that'll cause more issues. I, I'm really powerful. I'm skilled. I can get in there in my own skill. You don't need to add to that. You, know, you don't need to complicate things by, you know, from you know, uh, levying your power to manipulate the system. Uh, you don't need to do that. So that's how that established. Apparently, uh, Reiji can cook, and a lot of the class is pretty excited that Mikamo is a B-ranked border agent. They're pretty happy about that. Pretty, he was getting a lot of attention because of that, basically. So that Mikamo's not really accustomed to that, though. So a little bit awkward for him. He's not really the popular type, so not good dealing with that. Anyway, the episode ended off on pretty much the the invasion happening. Like, at first, when I heard the alarm go off, I didn't think much of it. I thought, oh, I guess we're going to have a quick, you know, one or two trail and soldiers attacking, and then we'll take care of that real quick. And it's no big deal. That's what I thought. That's why I didn't acknowledge it very much and just kind of kept talking, which I regret now, because it turns out that actually was the, the start of the invasion there. You just got to see portals popping up everywhere, and I eventually clicked in my head, like, oh, this is actually happening right now. So, yeah, we get to actually get on that pretty quickly. Like, you must said something about 10 days, but I guess we're just doing it as soon as possible. So we cut that kind of close as far as, uh, you know, Yuma giving information about this whole thing. So we're going to have a fun time soon. I am curious just how how uh, how many episodes they'll take with this. Because we haven't even... Yuma hasn't even ranked up to B yet, have they? Like, I thought for sure we would actually finish up the Ranking Wars thing and Chika and Yuma would be B rank before the invasion, you know, so they could attack, you know... You know, to their fullest, without having to worry about breaking any rules or anything. I thought they would do that, but I don't think they hit B rank yet, have they? At least I don't think they have. In which case, yeah, that complicates things a lot. So, you know, uh, just it kind of threw me off because I was expecting them to become B rank, then they deal with the invasion, and then they work to become A rank, then they go on away, away missions. 
That's kind of what I thought would happen. Something like that. But it seems like the they're kind of been in a bit of a hurry with the invasion. So, you know, no time to waste, I suppose. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing, like, not only neighbor, you know, the enemy neighbors, but ones with black triggers. Because we have Fujin with the tentacles, which is really cool. So I, I'm i really curious what kind of black trigger designs they could have. Which, I mean, I can't even really venture a guess. Maybe they would have one that lets you uh, mind control people. That'd be really cool. If they could, like, inv in like if you could, like, uh, invade, like, mind control somebody that has less Trion than you do. Like, it would have to have some kind of limitation like that, because this, this anime definitely comes across as video game ish and logic, so there has to be a bit of a balance there, even with the black triggers. They can't be too broken. So, you know, that have to be something like that. So what other, what other cool black triggers could there be? Uh, let's see. There could be one that lets you... Huh. I'm trying to think of something, maybe control gravity. <laughs> That'd be cool, because we have kind of that space theme with the neighbor world, so a gravity thing would be cool. Uh, let's see. I mean, I mean, I can't really think of anything, but the point is I hope we get to see some cool ones. I hope we get at least three black trigger. That'd be cool. I don't want too many because that would make it kind of hard for us to, to, you know, win. But I still would like to see a couple cool black triggers on the enemy side. It's kind of my point. But definitely a slow paced episode for the most part, which makes sense if the next episode is going to be the, the beginning of the invasion. So we're going to have quite a quite an adventure here. I'm looking forward to seeing the A squad to get to show what they can do, you know, fighting actual enemies. Because usually when I get to see the A, the a squads fight, it's like, hey, you're fighting the guys I care about. Stop it. So I can really enjoy that fully. Whereas with fighting the enemy neighbors, yeah, I can fully get on board and root for all of them. You know, Cosmos team, the Tachikawa's team, like all of them, I can actually root for them. And hopefully even Arashiyama can get in the, into the action. So definitely something to look forward to. Unfortunately, Gene doesn't have his black trigger, which means he can't really use that. Actually, that's a good point. You know, if this invasion is a really big deal, so you would think they would want to make sure somebody has that black trigger. Like, they would, they shouldn't be too picky. Just give that black trigger to somebody that can use it because you, if they're sending their own black triggers, you need to take out every bit of power you have on them. So they can't really let that black trigger just sit unused. So surely they have to give it to somebody, even if temporarily, even if back to Gene temporarily. They might not want to do that, you know, all things considered. But they really should make use of that in this in this emergency. And Yuma definitely should make make use of his black trigger, even if he's technically not supposed to. He probably will in the end anyway, because this is a serious deal. But yeah, I think I've gone on long enough talking about that. So yeah, I look forward to the next episode. Thank you for watching, and a special thanks to Snoki for supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you consider clicking the like button and leaving a comment, because that's a great and easy way to let me know that people want more. If you want to do something big to help the channel, you can support me on Patreon and get nice benefits like early access to certain videos. See you next time.